Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be discussing about the doubly Markov matrix. And we will also see how we can write a Java program to check if a given matrix is a doubly Markov matrix. So for that, first of all, let's create a file in our home folder. So we will go to the home folder and we create a file doublymarkov.java and through comments let's write down all the criteria that is needed to satisfy that a matrix is a doubly Markov matrix. So the first criteria is that all elements are greater than or equal to zero. This is the first criteria. The second criteria says that sum of each row is equal to one. And also sum of each column is also equal to 1. So according to the question given in ISC sample paper, we have to declare a square matrix of order n and we have to fill up that matrix with numbers and then we have to check whether it is a doubly Markov matrix or not. So let's import the scanner class. And we create a class doubly Markov. Then we write the main function. We create the scanner object. So scanner object will be used for user input. Now we ask for the value of the dimension of the matrix. So we give a message n is equal to So we have input the value of n, the size of the matrix, the square matrix. And according to the sample question, it is said that the value of n should not be less than 3 and it should also not exceed 9. So that's the limit given for n. So we have to make sure that the value of n is valid. So we will use an if condition. If n is less than 3 or n is greater than 9. So in any of these cases we can say that it is invalid. So we will print an error message. And then we call the return keyword. Why return keyword? Because we are inside the main function and if we call the return keyword, we will exit from main. We will be able to stop the program, to terminate the program. And if the value of n is a valid value, if it is in range, then this if condition block will be skipped. And now we will be able to create the array. So the data type of the array should be double here. So I'm giving the name of the array as M, M for matrix. And it is a square matrix. So for both row and column, I have given the size N. Next, I will take 
a boolean variable is negative and I will set it to false initially. So here I am assuming that the values are not negative. The values that will be entered, it will not be negative. That is why I have kept is negative as false. I take another Boolean variable is Markov and I set that to true. That means I am assuming that the given matrix is a doubly Markov matrix but my assumption can be wrong also in that case. If it's wrong, I will change the value to false. Next, I ask the user to enter the elements for the matrix. Enter elements in the matrix. And for this, I will require a nested loop i equals 0, i less than n, i plus plus. And here, while I am inputting the values into the matrix, I will also find the sum of each and every row. So for every row, I am taking a variable row and initializing it as 0, 0.0. So for every row, it will reset to 0, 0.0. And then in the nested loop, I will do the actual sum. So for j equals 0, j less than n, j plus plus. Here, I will input the values. Once the value is input, I will check whether it is negative or not because one criteria is that it should not be negative. Each and every element should be zero or greater than zero. So that's why as soon as the value is entered, I check if mij is less than zero. So in that case, I set is negative to true because initially it was false. But if I find that if any value is negative, I set it to true. And I also find the sum of the elements in a given row. So for that row plus equals to m i j. Once the sum of a given row is calculated in the inner loop, what I will do next? I will check whether the sum is equal to 1.0 or not. If it's not 1.0, then it is not a doubly Markov matrix. So that is why if the sum is not equal to 1.0. In that case, is Markov will change to false. Once we have finished entering all the elements into the matrix, now I will check if there was any element which was negative. So I will write if is negative, Again, I have to print another error message. Negative numbers entered. Invalid entry.
and here also I call the return keyword because I don't want to proceed any further. I want to stop the program. Next, I also have to check column wise if all the columns sum up to 1.0. So once again, I require a nested loop. But here, instead of I, I will now take J is equal to 0 because I have to go column wise. J is less than N, J plus plus. And inside this outer loop, I will first of all take a variable column where I will be finding the sum of each and every column. For every column, it will reset itself to 0, 0.0. And a nested loop. So here column plus is equal to m of ij. Once the sum is calculated for a given column, I can check whether it is 1.0 or not. So if any column sum is not equal to 1.0, so in this case also we can say it's not a doubly Markov matrix. So I will uh, set the value of is Markov to false here also. And I will call the break keyword because I now want to come out of the outer loop. Next, I want to display the original matrix. So first of all, I want to give a heading message formed matrix. And now I run a nested loop to print the matrix. So in this inner loop, we are printing one complete row. And once we finish printing one complete row, we are going to the next line by changing the cursor using the println. And after printing the original matrix, now we are checking whether it is is Markov or not. So we will use the if statement here. If is Markov, we will check the value of is Markov. If it's true, then we can say that yes, it's a doubly Markov matrix, else it is not. So let's print the message accordingly. And our program is complete and let's now save it and check the output. So let's compile. So the value of n is being asked. Let's give the value of n as 3. And now it is asking for the elements that we need to store in the matrix. So let's give 0 0.5, 0 0.25, again 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.75, 0 0.0. 
0 0.25, 0 0.0 and 0 0.75. So you can see that we have printed the original matrix and it is displaying that yes, it's a doubly Markov matrix. If you add each and every row, you will see that the sum is 1.0. If you add each and every column also, then also the sum is coming to 1.0 and each and every value is zero or above. None of the values are negative. So it is satisfying all the conditions. Let's take another example. Again, we are giving the value of n as three. And this time let's give 1.5, 3.0, let's say. then 0 0.15, 0 0.25, 4, 1.0, 0 0.25, 0 1.0, 3.0. So in this case, it's not a doubly Markov matrix you can see that there are certain values that are greater than 1.0 and so the sum is also coming to greater than 1.0. Next, if we give the value of n as 2, so you can see it is printing that the size is out of range and so it is an invalid entry. So that's all in this video. I hope you have understood how to write a program to check if a matrix is a doubly Markov matrix in Java. That's all for now. See you in the next class and thank you for watching.